בישות קהל הקדוש, everybody welcome. בעזרת השם, השם שגיב אז פה לך הצלחה, בריאות, הרבה נחת בעזרת השם. And also, ברכה הצלחה לילק בן אשר, שהוא ספונסרינג לשיעור, סלמון בן נדיה, בעזרת השם, חתונה, פרנסה טובה, וגם כל החטופים וחטפות, ילדים, קידנאפ, קידס, פמיליס, גרנדפאפס, גרנדמאס, מי השם, ברגע את הפיס, את הפיס, את הפיס, את הפיס, את הפיס, את הפיס, את the our soldiers that are defending the Jewish nation we come back with the Shalom with the peace to the fam to the families and by Israel Hashem v'schut the Torah magna and matzna which is the protection and the savior that will save the Jewish nation so whoever liked the video please su subscribe second thing is I would like to say that whoever is listening to this shiur or previous shiur about the Mashiach, I want to very, very much encourage people that they should listen the first one, the second one, the third, until we're going to finish the whole topic of the Mashiach. Like this, people would have clar clarity what means Mashiach and how is the Mashiach about to come. All the previous shiurim, we cover it. We continue saying in Masechet Sanhedrin 97b. The following Boraita underscores the fertility of attempting to predict of the dates of the redemption. So our Chachamim says, when is the date of the Mashiach would come? In the Torah of the Baraita, Rabbi Nathan Omer, Mikra ze nokev v'yoret at the home. Rabbi Nathan says, this verse perceives and plumps into the depths, which is means when is the Mashiach comes, it's like a depths of the sea. Nobody knows. Same thing we are, we don't know the exactly date. So it says following, this verse is un, it's so deep as the ocean, just as it's impossible to measure the depths of the ocean. It's so too impossible, it's impossible to determine when is the end, which is verse that alludes. The Rashi says, like the ocean of the sea, it's so deep that we would not know when is the date of the Mashiach will come. Yad Ramai explains that the Rabbi Nathan exclamation as follows even if the exile as long as the ocean is a deep even when it's such a deep exile which is almost 2,000 years the following word verse will always provide hopes to the Jewish people but we should not lose our hopes even if it's so deep even if it's so long it will destine with them to the depths which is means the way the the exile is so deep is destined with us with the depths of the Mashiach time. For it assures them that the redemption will ultimately come. So this is the punchline. Don't think, I heard this shiur, I heard different shiur. I'm saying to you black and white, I'm reading to you. It's 400% sure that the redemption will, will ultimate, ultimate will come. That's what it says. So Mikra ze noke vo yored at chom ki od chazon le moed va yafiach la ketz vo lo yichazev For this another vision of the appointed time and it should speak at the end it should not lie So it says you should supposed to be say appointed time which is means Habakkuk talks about in a 2-3 It says we're gonna talk about the Mashiach and we should not lie about the Mashiach the verse impl implies that the date of the redemption is concealed from us. So in Echarbakuk it says the date of the Mashiach, when is it coming, is concealed from us. So Habakkuk was one of part of the Navi, prophet, 2-3. And it says the date is concealed from us. But I want to be rabbi, I want to be bigger than a Habakkuk. I want to know the date. I'm going to... I'm going to make a calculation, gematria this, gematria that. I, I, I saw somebody in my dream coming and they're telling me the preordained date doesn't exist. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry whoever listening. These things does not exist. I saw a dream. I saw Mashiach coming in my dream. How you know how Mashiach going to look like? Anyways. So let's go forward. These verses implies 
that the date of the date of the redemption is concealed from us. Those it is contrary in, to our sages who expound the verse until the time and times and half a time. Determine the date of the redemption. Rav Samlai says, It is in a, it's also in a contrary to the Rav Simlai, who expound the verse, you fed them bread of tears, which is, means you fed them bread of tears, that we're in exile, whatever time we're eating, or whatever time we're doing the daily activities, is become for us tears and tears and tears. That's what the exile bring it to us. You made them drink, you made them drink, them drink tears of third. To determine the date of the redemption. It is in the contrary, the Rabbi Akiva was expounded the verse, there should be another one, it should be the slight, and will be shake, and I will shake the heavens and the earth to determine the date of the redemption. Even the Rabbi Akiva tried to figure out when is the verse of the redemption, he wants to know, he would shake the earth and the heavens and the earth to understand when is the Mashiach, the date should Mashiach would arrive. According to Rav Simlai, you made them drink the tears for the third, a third means that the God made the Jewish people drink the bitter waters of an exile. The first in Egypt and subsequently in Babylon for the period equal to one-third of the final exile. Since the Egyptian exile lasted 400 years, because we worked day and night, it lasted 210 years, to one-third of the final exile. Babylonian exile was 70 years. That's what the Yirmiyahu prophet says in 29.10. It follows the final exile will last 1,410 years, which is three times 470 years. That's what the Rashi says. Haggai, which is another prophet, Haggai Malachi, Haggai, which is in a 2-6 says, Rabbi Akiva interpreted this verse as teaching that after the destruction of the second temple, the Jews will enjoy the period of the limited glory. Another one should be, it should be slight. The Mashiach would come, it would shake the heavens and the earth. That's what the Rashi says. According to the Maharasha, however, Rabbi Akiva understand the verse as meaning that there will be another exile, but it will be slight. Then the Mashiach will come. Rabbi Akiva's view of the prophecy refers to the Bar Koziva, Bar Koziva who led the, a revolt against the Ro Roman approximately 53 years after the second temple destruction. Rabbi Akiva considered Bar, Kozbiya, Bar Koziva to be the Mashiach. Rabbi Akiva says because the Jewish people were say in uh, pain and suffering, he says after the second Bet HaMikdash, 53 years Bar Koziva was reigned, which is, means being a rulership. Unlike the verse expanded the sages, the Rav Simlai, which is indeed speak the final rede redemption, the verse expound by Rabbi Akiva reference to a different topic. That's what the Yad Ramah says. The verse expound by Rabbi Akiva does not refer to the period after the second temple was destroyed. Rather, it means that during the second temple era, the Jews will enjoy the relatively short period of the sovereignty for the rest of the era. They will be ruled by foreign powers. That is indeed what happens in the second temple stood for 420 years, but the Jewish people enjoyed complete independence for only 70 years of the Hashmonaim dynasty, for 52 years of the Heredian dynasty. In Avodah Zarah 9a, the Hashmonaim and Herodian dynasty each lasted 103 years. They will be fulfilled independent for 70 and 52 years respectively. Several, several years after the destruction of the second temple, the Jews will enjoy short period independence during the two and a half years in a Bar Koziva reign in Yerushalayim. That's what it says, Rashi. We continue. 
The Gemara discusses the verse cited in the beginning of the Boraita. What does it mean, the verse of it should speak of the end and it should not lie? Which is the verse says it should speak to, of the end and should not lie. The prophet should not lie, God forbid. Amar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani, Amar Rabbi Yonatan. Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmani said the name of the Rabbi Yonatan. Tifach atzman shela machsheve kitzin. May the very essence of those who calculate ends suffer agony. Which is means somebody is trying to figure out the date, he becomes so nervous, agony. How you say agony, Rabbi Nisim? Huh? Our interpretation, agony. How you explain to people? In t whoever trying to figure out the date when is the Mashiach come, he's having internal, he would have internal suffering. Why is that? He's trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Since, calculate, Shayu Omrim for this say, Kevan Shayagia etakets, Viloba. So the following it says, they, has cal they calculated and has arrived in Mashiach and did not come. So the people have an agony. They say, listen, we're trying to figure out Mashiach. We know when is the Mashiach coming. We know the date. Prepare yourself, guys. And he did not come. Shufenoba, and he would never come. So at the end of the end, the results, what people will say, oh, he would never come. So that, that's why we have to be careful with the dates. But over here, we have a problem. Calculating the date of the redemption. We in a 5,784 years since the creation of the world. The Gemara apparently forbids any attempt to calculate when the Mashiach would come. In the Gemara we're learning, it says it's black and white, forbids us to calculate when is the Mashiach come. Forbids us. What's the reason? So people could have an agony and they say this is the day the Mashiach is supposed to be come. He doesn't come, that's it, he never will come. And we continue suffering and, and, and pain in a long exile. This prohibition is codified by Rambam. Maimonides says in a Chilchot Malachim 12.2. He says, black and white Rambam, it's a lacha, it's a law. You should not calculate the days. You should not try to figure it out. Says the Gemara, black and white prohibits these people that do it. But how come my rabbi do it? I heard this also. How come he does it? How come he says? I don't know if he saw this Rambam. If he would have seen this Rambam, he would not do what he does. But he's bigger than you. We have many, many people going again. Yeah, what can you do? Let him read the Gemara. Yet throughout the generation, the great sages have predicted and announced such a date. But he says, Rambam says, there's a Chachamim that said, this is the day the Mashiach will come. The great sages have predicted and announced such a date. The Rambam deals with the problem with the Igeret Teiman, where he has heart put into explaining Rav Sadia Gaon. So Rambam is explaining Rav Sadia Gaon, which is the generations before the Rambam. Calculating of the end. Rav Sadia Gaon is calculating. The Gemara prohibits. But Rav Sadia Gaon comes in and he calculates when is the Mashiach come. The only justification he finds is that the Gaonim generation, there was a need to strengthen the fate of the coming of the Mashiach. He says the reason Rav Sadia Gaon and the Gaonim time did, did calculate when is the Mashiach come. They need to strengthen the faith, faith of the coming of the Mashiach. And so he offered a possible end. Rav Sadia Gaon says, this is the day, this is the time. Not the time, the end. In the near near future, is presumably that the reason why the Rambam himself advanced a date. He says, after the Rav Sadia Gaon said the date, in order, look at the punchline, the faith in the coming of the Mashiach. We need to have a faith. So in the time of the Rav Sadia Gaon, the faith was deteriorated, which is, means people have stopped already believing in many, many things, so he strengthened it, is allowed. 
And Rambam continues doing what the Rav Sadia Gaon does it. Rambam, Ramban, and Abar Manel give broader grounds for permitting the search for the end. Ramban and Abar Banel, he gives the strong grounds when it's going to be the end. In a view, the prohibition is only against making a defined prediction. So today is the Thursday, and we say today is a Thursday, 5784. We're in the 21 Mar Cheshvan, we're in the 20th. Oh, we could call it on a Thursday, in a November 2nd. That's the time it comes. This is forbidden. Prediction is going to come another month, two months, three months, predicting. We're not so sure. Prediction is allowed. But definite is not allowed. Which is proven wrong. If you do a definite prediction, it was wrong could cause people lose their the faith. People losing their faith. These commentaries point out that after the expression, expression, expressing the prohibition of Gemara ads, they explain for they say, since the end come and the Mashiach did not come, he would never come. That's what people do. Therefore, if one advance interp interpretation of these verses, only as a possible meaning, not a def definite conclusion. Possible is yes. But to make a definite conclusion, when is the Mashiach come? None of us could do that. Even the Geonim, even the Rambam, and the Ramban did not do it. Ramban also suggests that the sages, being close to the destruction of the temple, knew the, that the redemption was still far away. They say the second Beit HaMikdash destroyed, they knew the, for the exile to be a long time, the redemption was still far away. Therefore, they forbid all the investigation of the end, and so not to discourage the people with the land of the bitter exile. He it says, it's enough we're living in this exile, and you're putting more bitter to the people. You're giving hopes, and that hope did not reach. Forget about it. How many times we see people, they say, Rabbi, I pray, my prayer is not answered. That's what I'm not doing. Oh, I didn't get A, B, C, D. I'm not doing. I gave a tzedakah. I, this, this thing happened right away to me. I'm not doing. That's not the way it works. What is this? If this, is, this is we have to do everything in a condition. Uh, you give it to me, I give it to you. This is, he maintains, is no longer applicable to these times. Rashi apparently follows the lenient approach. After explaining the passage dealing with the end, Daniel talks about 8.14. Rashi concludes, we await for the fulfillment of God's promise to redeem us. That's what the Rashi says. Even though one is predict end, after another has passed, the end is passed, another end. We said during the COVID, it's going to be Rahim Mashiach. We said during uh, World War I, World War II, this is the Mashiach. Right now the war in Israel, this is the Mashiach. Yes, he has the potential to come to anybody over here sitting or all over the world that there's a Jews, he will come anytime and he's ready. And what's, the, what's holding him? We're going to say what's holding him. If the end predict by the Commentary passes, we know that he, he erred, and whatever comes after him should search and interpret otherwise. In, explain, in explaining how great the sages, including even Tanaim, error in the end of calculation, that's what the says. Even in the time of the Talmud, they're trying to figure out people error, which just means we can't say that. What are we going to say? Ramban stated that, that it was a God will to, to end be concealed. However, the sages did not necessarily error in a conventional sense of the world. And mentioned above in 97.8, note 60. There are many times suited for the redemption. There's many times suited for redemption. When the Mashiach would come, if only the generation had been worthy. What should I do? The generation should be worthy. That's what people ask. 
the various, the various predictions made by our great sages for, do, for those times. That's what it says. So it depends on us. We could bring them today. We could bring them tomorrow. It all depends on us. We have to strength in our mitzvot, the way we do mitzvot, the way we treat each other. Maran Chida says, the only way we're going to be redeemed, and that's the one way, achdut, unity, and peace. If we have these two comp components in ourself, unity and peace. Is it possible? From today day I see, everything is possible. You're going to say, no, it's impossible. We saw during the COVID-19, the whole world, not only the United States of America, planes were not flying. The whole world was, whoever would dream, one day wake up and he says, the whole world is closed. After the attack in Israel, October 7, which is Simchat Torah, that Shmini had said it, who would taught whatever they did that day, and the whole world just flip in one day? Possible? Everything. We would say, if I would have told you this before that October 7, you would have said, no, Rabbi, what are you talking about? We're living great, everything is good. All right, now you see every Jewish heart, every Jewish soul, there's no, does not feel pain and suffering for our brothers and sisters. We feel it, all of us. You go to any family, religious, not religious, anybody talk about, that's all they talk about. It's agony and it's a pain and suffering for Jewish people. We see that. Back then we would have said, okay, the, you know, Israeli fighting, okay, it's okay, you know, it happens, there's certain rocket missiles here, missiles there. And we see it. You see, people want to do tshuva, repentance. We see that. Even in their hearts, they would say, listen, I want to change myself. It's very important. Let's go forward. So, envy, as since the divine, so what, what, what stops the Mashiach come? Rather, you should wait for him. Shenemar. Im it mahmeya hakelo, as is stated, if he he does not still come, wait for him. That's what it says, Habakkuk two three. After the time when you taught, he would come, wait for him, wait. Oh, it's all about patience. Shema toma. Let's say, let's you counter that. Anu michakim vuino michake. We are waiting for the Mashiach, but the God does not await for him. That's what we say. We say, God does not want it. God does not want to bring the Mashiach. That's what people would say. We're waiting, but the God does not want it. Why can't he just bring it? Why should God want, why should God want to benefit us when we have sinned before him? That's what the Maharaja says. Why should God want to benefit us when we have sinned before Him? So we're going to say, let's say, let Hashem forgive us and let Him bring a Mashiach. The problem by forgiving, we have a lot of us have families, kids. When a child does something wrong, if you forgive him right away, if you don't teach him a lesson, what's going to happen? What are the odds that he's going to... He's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Rabbi, that's not true. I want to bring a Mashiach. Let Hashem bring a Mashiach. We're going to be in a peace and a unity. It cannot happen. If we cannot get in a peace and a unity in one shoe, maybe 10, 15, 20 people, they want to hate one another, or want to have, how are you going to be as a united and a... You're going to take everything apart. That's the work in process right now. Unfortunately, the future of the Gemara would say, the only way for us to be redeemed is only when we're going to be against the wall. Once we're going to get to that stage, God forbid, against the wall, then we just say, against, against the wall. Wall.
That's the only way. Other way people would not understand it. So it says following. Talmud Lomar, the scripture therefore stated, Lachen yichake Hashem linanchechem, lachen yarum lirachamechem. And therefore Hashem waits and to grant you favor. And He's an exalted to grant you mercy. And if you ask that since we are waiting for Mashiach, and God is waiting for Him, who's stopping? We want it. Hashem wants it. Who stopped Him to come? Who is preventing His arrival? The answer is that divine attribute of justice is preventing him from coming. What's it means? The divine attribute of justice is preventing him from coming. It says following, as the verse continues, Hashem is the God of justice. So Hashem is God of justice. Because the Jews have sinned, God's attribute of justice does not allow them to be redeemed before the final end. That's what it says, Yad Rama, Maharasha, Maharau. It says, Hashem wants it, we want it. He says, the justice, which is means Hashem bring a justice, and that justice stopping from Him to coming, of the Mashiach. Oh, the question being asked. And if you ask, since the divine attribute of justice prevents him from coming, why do we wait for him? Why do we wait for him? Since we don't know when the Mashiach will come, perhaps it is better not to, not to pine for him. Pinning for something over an extent period without knowing when it will occur, can make one heart sick. An alternative explanation by waiting the Mashiach would postpone his coming because as stated in the 97, the Mashiach will come when the intention is diverted from him. That's what it says. So far so good. So the answer is that we await for him in order to receive reward, rewarded. So why are we waiting for him? In order for us to receive the reward, but every time we're waiting for him. Shenemar <speaking in Hebrew> as stated, Ashre ha'hoche lo, fortunate are all who await for him. Fortunate is who's waiting for the Mashiach. And I want to read a note over here. This is a, in, that is in every generation. In this world, there are no less than 36 people who are so righteous. And they will merit to perceive the Shekhinah, which is, means the divine presence of Hashem. When they enter the world to come, Yad Rama says, the, ref, the reference is the particular elevated level in the world to come. In a parallel passage in a sukkah, the text reads, Bechol yom, instead of Bechol dara. He says in a Masechet, sukkah, page 45, every day potential have a Mashiach, not, ne, not every generation. Which is my dear friend Salman asking, is it every generation, but we have a new generation, our kids, every day. Every day we have a potential for him to bring it to the Mashiach. According to this version, Abaye possibly means that 36 is the total number of the righteous people from all the generation who will be married to perceive the Shekhinah to this decree. The Gemara digresses to the record another teaching based on this verse. Amar Abaye, Abaye says, Lo pachot alma mitlati v'shatet tzadiki, kable ape Shekhinah b'chol dara. The world is compromised, not less, not less, then a 36 righteous people in each generation who receive the continuance of the divine presence. He says each generation have 36 tzaddikim, 
But we know Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Lazar and his son, the only, only two tzaddikim. And they say we're able to, I don't think anybody could say that in the Gemara except for, it, for them, Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Lazar, they say we're able from the time of the Adam Rishon until our time, which is the living, we're able to nullify all the decrees in the world we take upon ourselves. And he says in the time of the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, there was no rainbow showing. What does it mean? Rainbow shows when Hashem is angry at the world that he wants to put a, bring a flood. But because he made a covenant with the world. And he does not, cannot bring a flood. From this we learn, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai time, it was only two tzaddikim. He says, I would make sure the generation, if you're going to give me my son, he asking Hashem, if you give me my son, he says, I would, I would nullify all the decrees from this world. Chachamim wanted to do that. Each generation have 36 tzaddikim. Who are you going to call tzaddikim? So you call, each one of us we call tzaddikim. The, the, the Isaiah says, kulam tzaddikim. The prophet says, everybody tzaddikim. But we're talking about these 36 specific tzaddikim. So it says, Shenemar, Ashre kol ho is the state that fortunate are who wait for him. Lo gimatriat latin vishita havu. And the world, and the word lo, which is means 36, has numerical value of 36. The Gemara challenges Abaye teaching. Eni, Amar Rabbi Darkama, Kucha Berechu Tamne Sere, Alfe Have. Why Rav Rava have said it that in a row before the Holy One blesses he is compromise of 18,000. He says 18,000 tzaddikim, not 36. Saviv Shmona Yisrael Elef Shenemar. And there is setting, it is stated surrounding 18,000. So it says surrounding by Hashem, 18,000 tzaddikim. So make a decision. Is it 18,000 or there's only 36 tzaddikim? How many... How many, how many tzaddikim total we have since the generation of to come? Yechezkel 4835 says, 18,000 righteous people are closer to Shekhinah. The, in a, ministering angels. That's what says Yechezkel. This contradicts, contradicts Abaye teaching because as Abaye maintains, there are only 36 complete righteous people in each generation. And even those, of course, of 6,000 years, if you're going to take a course of 6,000 years, the total number of such a people would not reach 18,000. So what does it mean? Although Abaye not less than 36, he did not mean to imply the, that there could be more than this number. According to this plain meaning, the verse gives this, alternately, the Mashiach era, the figure 80,000 refers to the rats, that they measure six amod each. So they go on, how is it 36, 36 tzaddikim or 18,000? The Gemara answers, lo kashya, there's no difficulty. Hi, the ispak, mistakel be ispaklaria mi'ira. This is the Abaye teaching refers to the person who viewed the divine presence at, through a clear screen. What does it mean, clear skin, screen? Hi, the ispaklel be ispaklaria sheino mi'ira where the Rav teachings refers to the person who viewed the divine presence of the, through the screen that is blurry. 41. The number of these who perceive the full radiance of the Shekhinah, it's only 36. Many perceive in a Shekhinah to lesser extent. That's what the Rashi says. And also Yad Rama, Rambam, Moses was the only person who ever perceived the full radiance of the Shekhinah through the medium of the prophecy. Moshe Rabbeinu, like the Torah says, Lo kam navi ke Moshe. No prophet will able. What does it mean? So you're going to say, there's a many prophets came after Moshe Rabbeinu. Many prophets saw the prophecy through the dream or through the sleep, or through the meditation. 
Moshe Rabbeinu able to see clear being awake which is we don't have this type of people and we never had this type of people including our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov only Moshe Rabbeinu able to look to the clear picture what's happening and Ispaklaria is in an uphill screen through which is the object appear distorted the, the word is a contradiction so doubtful, not doubtful, a screen that is perfectly transparent is a called espaklaria mira, literally, illuminating screen. The Rambam commentary in the Kelim, Yad Rama, alterna alternatively, espaklaria means the mirror, that is in the Latin word, word. According to either explanation, the term is used as a metaphor for the perception of the Shekhinah, which is cannot be viewed directly by it only through the screen as a reflected image. We cannot take certain words directly the way they're translated because we don't understand them and we don't have enough knowledge what they are means. The Gemara raises another difficulty with Abaye teaching. But there are so many who view the Divine Presence clearly. The Amar Chizkiya Amar Rabbi Yirmiya Mishum Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Why the Chizkiya had said, with the Rav Yirmiya said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Ra'iti bnei Aliyah vehen muatim. He says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, I have been seeing the people of the of the highest level, and there are few. Ima elevem ani bnei ani bnei mehem. If there are thousands and me and my son are among them, if there are hundred, I and my son among them. And he says, if there are two, me and my son is with them. It's me and my son. You're going to say, excuse me, the guy have a, the rabbi have a gava, gava, which just means he, how you say gava? Ego, yeah. The Gemara says, you know how many thousand people reading this Gemara? Millions and millions of people reading. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, thousand, and we including those two thousand. If there's a hundred, I'm include me and my son in this hundred. And there's a two, I'm include. I'm the I'm the only one and my son, the only one. Also part of it. So how can Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai over here comes in? You're going to say, what an ego he has. Look at him. What is he talking about? He could say whatever he wants to say because he's the Gdol Olam. Which is, means, Hashem said himself, I created the world for Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Does it make sense, Rabbi Nisim? Let's see. Let's see, Rabbi. There are many different levels of reward for the righteous. Aliyah significant, significant, the highest level. Alternatively, they translate as people as a son who is affitted, uh, ascend to the heaven. Based on his assessment of the people deeds, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai calculated the group of people who fully Perceive the divine present. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says, the way you see people, previous generation, that fully perceive the divine presence is a small. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had been divinely assured that he and his son were members of the supreme group. Supreme group. Hence, although there were many prophets who were greater than Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he was sure that he and his son belong to this group regardless of its size. This is his Yad Rama. Yad Rama implies that Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai's statement applies to all the generation. Rabbi Hananiel stated that he was referring only to his generation. Some say Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai says all the generation. Rabbi Hananiel says only to his generation. So let's make a point over here. There are such 
immensely that the many approach of the Shekhinah without first asking permission of the angel appointment for this purpose. Rashi explained Rabbeinu Hananel and Tusukah, the analogy is drawn to a royal household. Only the king's family members and those servants who attend to him at all the times may enter his chambers without permission. Etz Yosef says, he says, what the Rabbi Shimo Bar Yochai talks about? He says, the king, he has a family members and you have a servants. When a family member wants to go to his father as a king, does he need to ask him permission? No. The servants, when he needs to go, he does not go. He needs to clean, he needs to go clean. He needs to come out, he needs to come out. Chambers without the permission, alternatively, is translated him and his son. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai was the speaking of the righteous people who married to receive the supreme reward together with his son. Of these, there were very few, very few. That's what it says, Yad Rama, in the name of Rav Haigon. Marasha raises the following difficulty. difficulty. Abaye said that only 36 people would perceive the divine presence, where the Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai entertained the possibility there are as many as Shimon ben Yochai, a thousands of such a people. Possibly that there's many as thousands of people. Marasha gives another answer in a Aruch Laner. This problem can be solved with the Yad Ramah. Approach with Rabbi Shimon was referring to the righteous of all the generation. Abaye, on the other hand, was speaking of each generation individually. See Marasha who contrasts Abaye teaching with the Gemara in Huli 92a which is stated, every generation there is a 45 righteous people in those merit the world's sustain. It says every generation, not only you have 36 tzaddikim, you have 45 tzaddikim and the whole world is sustained. What's the topic about me talking about Mashiach and all of a sudden we're talking about the righteous? As long as the righteous living, they will protect the whole generation. The question is, you need to ask, who is these righteous people? We could go and visit them and get the blessing from them. Or our gaiva, gaiva which just means our pride, would not give us the determine, should I go to him and ask him a blessing or not. We're going to continue. It's a topic after topic. It's an understanding after understanding. The topic is very broad. Like it says, it's like the depths of the sea. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for coming. May Hashem bless Am Yisrael. She will have success, Amen. happiness, joy. Bila Hamavid Lanetzach, like the verse says, the dead should be erased from this world. Amen. So the tears will be no more tears for the Am Yisrael and for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Rabbi Khalani Abin Akacha Omer, Ratsa Kadosh Parahu Lezakot et Israel, Kahir Balahem to Rome is what? Shinema Adonai Hapes, Limatik, Koyak, Dil, Torah, Yadib.